Hi, Gary Hewitt here from TechNag Social, and I'm here with Lee Wallace today. Now, Lee, you do coaching. You do, is it fair to call it life coaching? My clients will tell me it's life coaching. So okay, okay, but you have another term? Career coaching. Career coaching. Right. All right, so you, you have people show up on your doorstep, and, and literally the words coming out of their mouth are, um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to be when I grow up. Amazingly, a lot of people absolutely. And, and these are say. these are people like 30, 40, 30, 40 50, 50, 60, yeah. and 70. Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Still trying to figure it out. So it's not necessarily easy to figure out, but you help them figure it out. Yeah. The oh. year before I retired the first time, yes. I was saying the same thing. What am I going to do when I grow up? So, okay. Here we go. <laughs> and this is on your retirement. Yeah, 14 years later. <laughs> so, cool. Still at it. Okay. All right. So, so what do you bring to the table? What is it about Lee Wallace that you bring to the table that helps people figure out the answer to that question? Well, I'd like to start with the people who show up because okay. the people who show up are, are looking for a fit between themselves and whatever work they do. And mm -hmm. for me, it's, a, it's a, a, a tremendous loss, a real travesty if people are doing work they hate to do. Okay. And, and do not make the very best use of the talents that they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what I do is, is I work with people who are looking for that fit. Okay. And then uh, what is it that they really want? And they don't mm -hmm. always know exactly what they really want. They need awareness, they need clarity about what they want. Secondly, yes. they need to understand how they are a solution to somebody's problem. Ah, Whether okay. they're running their own business or looking for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's going to pay them only because they're a solution of some form. The solution so to how the are you a solution to somebody's problem? Again, mm -hmm. they need to be clear on it for themselves yes. with all their background and skills and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not as easy as it sounds. Nope. And the, the second piece of that is how do you articulate it in a way that other people understand? Mm -hmm. So how do you let people know that you have this value? Because if you can't articulate it, why should anyone hire you? Again, as, exactly. a, as a provider of services in one fair, form or another. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and that that's the key thing. And then in terms of where they want to be, and it, it could also be people, not only people who have good jobs but aren't happy, but people who have a lot of skills, mm -hmm. but they're either unemployed or grossly underemployed. Yes. Uh, I've got one new client at this point who's an engineer, been working a lot in the tech field and in other financial services field, mm -hmm. and he's been working at uh, Tim Hortons doing, making donuts. Okay. He's not absolutely he's not right fulfilling. He's, he's, he's not, he, he he's wants not to doing be, what he wants yes. to do and what he can do, yes. so it's, it's a lose-lose-lose situation. Okay. He loses. Yes. The employer he works for probably loses too because okay. he's, he's in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, his contribution to the world out there that, gets yes, wasted. We all, we all he, he can't do it. Okay. So, so, so somebody like that, that well. comes to you. Mm -hmm. So how does the process work? What is it that somebody can expect from you or, or how does the process, how do they work with you? Well, it's not a cookie cutter. So it's okay. not, uh, okay, this is what we do, you fit into it. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that are, I do consistently, but the, uh, the key thing is to help them do what I said before. We go through that first process in terms of what is it you want. Okay. And what do you love to do? What are you good at doing? Yes. What's your background? All of those kinds of things. But particularly what you want is something that really feels good. Mm -hmm. In the end, everybody's looking for something that feels good yes. or is the state of being. How they get there is less important. Mm -hmm. But what is it that you want? What do you need to be doing? And the focus on uh, what do you bring to the table. So that yeah. leads right into the second step, which is all that piece about how are you a solution. Yes. And so we go okay. through uh, some of the work I do is with a consulting company where we, I deal with people who have uh, been laid off. Mm -hmm. So I've spent the last eight years doing that kind of work in addition to the work I do with my clients, which is more the, what am I going to do when I grow up? So I have the two pieces. When, when you get laid off, you grow up really fast. You grow up, well, you have to make some decisions, but it can be an opportunity as well. Okay. You may be stuck where you are, but you're not about to quit your job. Mm -hmm. So if you get laid off, all of a sudden it's very risky, yes. but at the same time, it could be a blessing. I've seen an awful lot of people who end up in say, something later on. I'm really glad they left. Yeah, the it, was, it was a transition point. It was that moment that I found myself and and moved to a better place. Well, they can't really say that, of course, till they get their next position when yes. they know the paycheck's coming in. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, that's what's really important. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a, a natural turning point. And in that case, what we do is we focus the, up to that point, it's learning things. 
how do you actually put it into action? Because a lot of people learn things, but they don't actually make it happen. Okay. So the coaching piece, the really important part of the coaching piece, is for implementation. Mm -hmm. So how is it that people take this knowledge that they've got about themselves, about the world, about what's out there, and actually turn it into a job, or in some cases starting their own business, and, and whatever. So this is part of what you do, Absolutely, is that you take them and help them through this process. Yes. So it's not just a matter of, here's the manual of you, study you, mm -hmm. right? go do your homework. Yeah. This, is, this is you taking them by the hand and getting them through some of these tough processes. Yes, absolutely. It's a, it is a, a hand-holding. I mean, mm -hmm. People don't like the term, but that's what okay. it is. I want somebody, if I don't know what I'm doing, I want somebody, will you please walk me through this? Yes. Well, that's what I do. Yeah. So that, that's a lot, uh, well, humans learn this way, right? It's, it's we need to experience things. And you can help them experience this transition in, in a space that's a lot more friendly than if they had to figure it out on their own. Yeah. Okay. And different people need different things. We mm -hmm. don't all learn the same way. We don't operate the same way. We don't have the same gifts. Mm -hmm. So what's really important is for them to use their strengths. Yes. Not to try to become something that they aren't, but to make mm -hmm. use of what they do have going for them to become who they are in a situation where it's win-win-win instead of lose-lose-lose. And you can help them figure out what those gifts are. Yes. Okay, cool. What does a working session with you typically consist of? Just so people can picture okay. working with you how that process would play out. It varies, and okay. at the first it tends to be really intense. There's one program that I, I use a lot with people, sometimes on its own, but usually as part of this larger program, mm -hmm. and that is to really take a look at what's important to them, and that's done in two three-hour sessions. So it's, it's very intense. We spend three hours together one-on-one, -on -one, and we go through this deep. whole, yeah, it's, and that's the right word. Yeah. Deep is the word. You can take all kinds of tests and inventories and so on, mm -hmm. you're still at the surface unless you dig. So this okay. is all about digging down mm -hmm. and finding out really what does matter to you. Okay. Uh, that, so that, that's one ver variation of it. For the uh, creating the tools and the, the solution, how you're a solution to somebody, mm -hmm. part of that's done with us together, part of it's things that they do on their own. Uh, but what we do is we come together and we help create that particular thing. They're not on their own to do that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, And we practice in terms of what they need to do. And I have people who can assist in doing the parts that they may not want to do to make it easier and faster in order to get oh, what they so want to do. So there's more than you. You have a team well, sort of thing? I work with my, by myself, yes. but I have people to whom I can uh, okay. refer. Okay. And, uh, so you've got Often some trusted people, that's colleagues. That's exactly what okay. they want. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So that's sort of the 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 coaching piece, the implementation piece later on can be done in as little as fifteen minutes to half an hour, say once a week, mm -hmm. and it can be done on the phone. Oh, okay. So, so it's convenient. So so once you've done the initial process, the deep deep digging, mm -hmm. then then it's a lighter process to go on, but you you help them stay on track. Yes. Okay. Excellent. It's it's keeping the momentum going. All right. So, you don't need a lot of nudge in order mm -hmm. to keep going, but you do need it. Once you've got the ball rolling, then it's just a matter of keeping it going. You're more likely, and I say this as somebody who's been coached as well, okay. it's important that coaches be coached themselves, Yes, uh, absolutely. is that the coaching keeps me going. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's easy to get stuck. So, so tell me, why do you do this? Uh, like I said before, I retired 14 years ago and, and was in the... Um, what do I do with the rest of my life stage? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know at that point because it happened fairly quickly in terms of circumstances changing and, and I chose so, to leave. So you got some circumstances thrust upon you? Well, it, what happened was it was less of a penalty to retire early. Okay. So I, I just, it was one of those, we make decisions one of three ways and usually all three, in our guts, in our hearts, or in our heads. This okay. was a gut decision. It was the right thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do, but it was to make a difference in people's lives, which is consistent with what I've been doing. I worked as a high school teacher and guidance counselor and career coordinator within the school board for 30 years. And okay. I love working with people individually. My background's counseling, I've done coach training on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a long history of doing career work. Uh, and I wanted to keep doing that. It's really important to me, and when I was working with teenagers, it was the same thing. What do you have going for you? What's out there for you? And mm -hmm. it's a process like this. For most people, it's not a straight line. So okay. in the variations that you do, which I've done myself, how do you get where you want to be? Well, you move closer 
to what is the best fit. Okay. And you can and tell and that. And then you, you base it on feedback and... Feedback from the world around you, mm -hmm. uh, what I call sometimes nudges from the universe. You know, <laughs> okay, there, there are things that people tell us consistently or yeah. they uh, keep remarking on, oh, you're really good at this. Well, we need to pay attention to that sort of thing. So it's, it's a piece of, of mm -hmm. what's really important. Um, and all, you put all of that together and say, okay, where am I going? But it, it's, a, it's always a draft. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're going in this direction. That's a, it seems like a good fit, but I may need to change this way. Or I may need to change that way, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you never know for sure, but what you get is a direction. And that's what a lot of people don't have. So uh, you have the, the compass piece, if you yes. like. We're going in that, that direction. The, the analogy I like to use, if you ever do map and compass out in the woods, okay. you never go in a straight line because there's a cliff here or there, yeah. there's a stream there, you, you need to do this. But you know where you're going, so you end up getting there. Yes. So, so, so you, you may not know specifically, but you will find out as you go yeah. exactly where it is that, that you need to be, and part of that is by being there. Okay. So, okay, this is the right place. If it's not, okay, how do I vary this so it's even better fit than it is? So, so it, it's a strong part of what I heard in that, is, is that it's important for you to do things that are that are good for other people. You you very much want to be of service, and yes, that's absolutely. that's your calling. That's my calling. That's okay. why I'm still working. Okay. That's why I love what I do. I yeah. love what I do for over 40 years now. And that, that's Ooh. great. All right. So so give us. Can you give us an example of um, of a success story that that you've helped create? Well, the one that comes to mind is a, is a woman who came to see me. Uh, mm -hmm. She said, I've had a good first 20 years of my career, and now I want to plan for the next 20 years of my career. Okay. And what she ended up doing um, is that it wasn't a huge change, mm -hmm. but it was a change in Ephesus. She went this, was going this way, and she went that way, using very much the skills and the experiences that she'd had before, but in changing it in a way so that it had a great deal more satisfaction to her, okay. but still within the same field, still able to use the same background mm -hmm. and to just alter it a little bit in terms of her credibility and doing this a little bit different version. Some people will say, okay, uh, I don't want to do this anymore, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and I need to get out of here, let go do something else. Yeah. That's more of a challenge just because they don't necessarily have the easy resume to, to back that up. But at the same time, you can look at their experience and see, you've been doing this, you've been doing this, you've been doing this, and you've been doing this. Yes, you do have credentials mm -hmm. for the right employer or the right customer if you start mm -hmm. your own business. Um, you have credibility because you know what you're talking about and you are able to um, set that up. So there, there, there is that totally different kind of thing that people will do. Mm -hmm. But it's all based on whatever their strengths are. And you can you use your strengths to find whatever that work is, whether it's building a business, finding a job, and at the same time, your strengths are what you bring to the table. It, it's part of what makes you unique in the delivery of the service that you do. Okay. Now, one of the things that you shared with me just before we, we started the interview was that a lot of people feel that they have to choose between doing something that they love or making money. Yes. And you don't agree with that? No. Absolutely okay. not. So can you speak to that for a moment? Well, the, the, I think this is a false uh, idea that people have come up with. And I actually saw at one point three different articles at the same time that argued that you should not be happy in the work you do, <laughs> which I think, who is this and what are they thinking? Uh, the, the key, though, is that what they're doing is they're saying, well, if, if you're out for yourself and something that really gives you satisfaction, then you're going to be a starving artist. Mm. Well... No, you don't have to do that. You could do that. But there are ways to take what you are talented at, what you are given the gift to be able to do, and go out and do it, and make money. It is perfectly possible to have a job that is tremendously fulfilling and have an abundant lifestyle. And, there are and you have to work at it. It doesn't necessarily just fall in your lap. There's work to be done, and you, a lot of clarity you need in order and, to do that. And you need a coach. And you need a coach. Yes, of course. Good thing we I know need one. a coach. You need a coach. <laughs> Everybody needs one. Everybody it needs makes a, coach. a huge difference. A lot of people don't realize the value of that. You wouldn't go to the Olympics. You wouldn't do any sports without a coach. And yet, for some reason, people go through life without coaching. The analogy I use is how often do you take your car in for preventive maintenance? Mm -hmm. At least twice a year, 
change the tires, do whatever it is you need to do. Yeah. When was the last time you took your career in for a checkup? Uh -huh. yeah. So that's a start. And then if you feel like you need to do more, you can do more. Excellent. Lee, is there anything else you want to put on the table to talk about today? Or we covered... No, I think the key thing is that um, if you have a sense that uh, something's not right, mm -hmm. either it's in your gut, it's in your heart, or it's in your head, yes. uh, and you're asking yourself questions like, what am I going to do when I grow up? <laughs> then have, let's at least have a conversation. We'll see if there's a fit between what you do and what I do. Excellent. Right, Lee, absolutely wonderful talking to you today. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you.